You are now tuned in to BFTV Buffalo Fanatics. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to share some news that took us by surprise if you guys are wondering what the hell i'm talking about i'm talking about richie incognito our pro bowl guard our anchor to the left side of the line has abruptly has surprisingly hung up the cleats he officially put it out there on twitter today that he's done with the game mental stress physical uh, abilities are deteriorating uh, kidney failure liver failure something of that nature whether this true or not true those are the things that are put out there so listen richie incognito has dumped the bills and says yo i gotta go so now we are left with a very thin and inexperienced line a thin and um untrustworthy line we went from having an experienced good solid line to now a big huge question mark here's how just three months ago our old line looked if we were to go in the season like this we would have had jordan mills to the right side with a question mark to it because we would have probably had somebody in camp to battle with him at guard we would have had john miller battle with vlad dukas again unless we brought in someone to shore up that left the right side then we would have had eric wood rich incognito and glenn and we had Dawkins to put wherever we needed him to. Now let's fast forward. Eric Wood comes out and says he's gotta abruptly retire because of uh, something in his neck, physical abilities. He's not able to play. So he retires. Hey, are we are we to be, you know what I mean, hemming and hawing that it's oh man, I can't believe we lost it. No, but it still hurt. But we could still get by with Ryan Groy. Now in comes a trade we trade cordy glenn to the cincinnati Bengals. we got Deion dawkins so it doesn't hurt us as much but this move really does so if we could lose each and every one of those guys you know i mean uh one year after the other then it wouldn't hurt as much but we lost three pro bowl type players in wood glenn and incognito in one off season that wipes the left side of the line completely clean. We now have a sophomore left tackle in Deion Dawkins, which would have had a very experienced left guard in Rich Incognito that he could have leaned on and learned from and had uh, uh, an insurance right next to him. But now we got a revolving door the whole line. You got a young Deion Dawkins that we expected a lot from that's now going to have to learn on his own, not have a, 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 a partner in crime that could teach him the way and move him along. So now we are now to expect bigger things from Deion Dawkins. I expect more from him now. I got to expect more from a second year player. Is that fair? That's those are the, those are the breaks. Those are the things that happen now. How does this affect our draft? How does this affect what we do going forward? So here's what happens with the Richie Incognito deal. 6.35 mil is what his base salary would have been. We asked him to take a pay cut down to 3.65, but he was able to retain some bonuses and so on and so forth here and there. So in total, we saved 1.67 million. Now with his retirement, we now save 2.15 mil and we still have to recoup some some monies that he owes to us because he's not gonna play this year. So we have the potential of saving up to $5.9 million when it's all said and done. We are already around $15 million in cap space. That moves us up just under $20 million. Great, but we lose such a vital part in this offensive line. How does this affect us going forward? How does it affect our draft? Let me tell you something. That run game that we so depend on is going to suffer. I don't care who we got back there. I mean, I do care because that's my guy, LaShawn McCoy. But LaShawn McCoy relies heavily on guys like Richie Incognito, on guys like Eric Wood. Now he's going to be running behind a Deion Dawkins, a question mark, a question mark, a question mark, a question mark. Man, this feels like all oh, the same old bills, but it's not. 
we're not gonna allow this thing to ruin our pretty damn good offseason so how does this affect us going forward do we now go heavy 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 and trying to get our quarterback no matter what do we peel back and say you know what let's now let's change this whole situation up let's now have to, let's go get a guard at 22 so what do we do with the 12th pick do we just go defense at the 12th pick go offensive line at the 22nd pick and then try to find our quarterback and hopefully mason rudolph drops to the second round and pick him up then could that be a situation do we say you know what bump all that we are going to go forward we are not going to let this old line situation screw us over trying to find this quarterback and do what we can and then we'll sort out this old line situation after that could be a route we go i i'm at a loss right now it really it really does bug me that richie decides to call it quits uh not personally but just for the season now you got to take care of your health you got to do what you got to do it was already it was it was already odd that he got rid of his agent a couple weeks back and all of a sudden now he's pissed off because we didn't give him the money that he wanted yada 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 anyway the point is this our o-line just got super damn weak weak sauce and now we got to deal with it now in order for us to figure out what we're going to do with this o-line position here are some guards we could probably find for cheap on the free agent market in terms of guard play number one jari evans if you guys don't know who jari evans is he was a former packer he was once one of the top rated guards in this game the only thing is he's 34 going to be 35 i mean we were just messing with incognito which was 35 he's a former pro bowler but however jari evans could bring veterans presence a good offensive lineman to help out our young left tackle and maybe then we can kind of continue on and try to make things happen number two luke jokel the former number two overall pick luke jokel could be a person that we bring in now luke jokel is littered with injuries he's not the same individual that they drafted in ja the jaguars he's not the same individual that they brought to the seahawks he's just not that guy however different scenario different schemes can totally change the game up maybe he can regain that that prowess that he once carried when he was the number two pick but that could be an option to bring in at six foot six 335 pounds that could be a difference maker at left guard and last but not least denver kirkland former arkansas lineman i had him slated to the bills a couple years back when i did my mock draft or my mock of who we were, who i thought we were going to draft um big boy six foot four 314 315 pounds um we could bring him he's an anchor he kind of reminds me of cyril richardson that we had before big boy anchored down but nothing fantastic i mean that is just a fly in the wind type of pick we could bring him on but i'm not sure but those are the three guys that we potentially could bring in uh, off the streets off free agency i mean if you look at the list man we are not saying much there's not a lot out there but if we are going to try to band-aid the situation band-aid this scenario those are the three guys that we could bring potentially to buffalo to help out with my man Dion dawkins at left tackle but the focus should not change quarterback is the main focus we still got to go after a quarterback and if we have to ante up and go after that number two spot do what must be done if you think that this is a, a sign for us to say you know what let's keep the draft capital that we have and fill the holes that we need because this move right now really screws us up it really sets us back in my opinion but we do have mcbean that is in control and have been making good moves thus far so we gotta trust the process and find out how exactly they're going to settle this ship right the ship so folks bills fans bills mafia bills fanatics how do you guys feel about this are we did we did we just get set back with this move do we still go forward and get this quarterback and not even worry about the guard position were we gonna get rid of incognito anyway so who cares those are the questions that I feel a lot of people are asking right now. I think it does hurt us exactly in the position that we are. However, it doesn't stop. This doesn't stop. We still got to get our quarterback. Browns, Broncos, Giants, Bucks are all in play to try to help us out and move up. There's There are ways to move up to the number two pick. Trading down all the way down to get to the number two. But is it worth it? Do we go that route or do we just play it safe? Playing it safe doesn't always work out. Sometimes you got to be aggressive. 
And I think this is where we have to be aggressive and not be the same old bills that we always have been. Be aggressive and go after the pick. But tell me what you guys think. Comment below. You know exactly what to do. Like, comment, and share this post. And click on that notification button when you want Buffalo Fanatics news. It's your boy Rico. And I'm gone. Hey.